I'm Eric Kloss and I'm managing partner at CG Life here in San Francisco at uh, Biotech Showcase. Uh, Biotech Showcase every year where the worlds of biotech and investment get together and really set the tone for what's coming in life sciences in the year ahead. I'm joined today by Michelle Keefe. Uh, she's president of the Commercial Solutions uh, Division within Cineos Health. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Uh, maybe just a good place to start. Can you tell us a little bit about Cineos Health and what you do? Sure. So I, I lead the commercial division of Cineos Health, but if you really want a, a simple way to think about what we do, is we're an insights-driven, integrated product development company. We, we really take our insights from our clinical development and our CRO, we mm -hmm. marry them up with our commercial insights, and because of that unique combination, we're able to really help companies think through their strategy from development all the way through the commercialization. That's great. Uh, I know that it's a fully integrated uh, company and there's, it, it seems that there's a, a certain benefit to having a CRO and a, a contract solutions, commercial solutions business under one umbrella. Can you explain what those benefits are for your, sure. your customers? Yeah, so this is uh, one of the funnest parts about being with Cineos Health is that we talk about how it's becoming more and more critical mm -hmm. for biotech companies to bring commercial strategies in earlier into their development process. And so having such a large CRO that's doing so many of the clinical trials on all the innovative medicines and biotech, you know, we're early on bringing in insights from commercial around value and access, payer strategies, patient recruitment strategies. And so because we have that knowledge at hand and it's, kind of, it's part of the fabric of the way we think about product development, we really think we're helping customers think more holistically about what they need to do to have success long term. Um, can you maybe spell out some of the, so spe the specific challenges that some of the, your customers on the commercial side might be facing going into 2020? So um, everything is about pricing, reimbursement, value, and access. That is a huge theme, right? Mm -hmm. um, and making sure that you're spending your money in the place that you're going to get the best ROI. That, that really seems to be the themes on um, the challenges that customers are facing. And mm -hmm. you know, so one of the things that we're uniquely positioned to do is we have experts, like for example, in value and access, we have uh, consulting experts, we have HEOR experts, um, we have managed markets agencies that help you communicate the value mm -hmm. of, of your brands. And we also have, we deploy people that go out and help customers with reimbursement mm -hmm. and help um, physicians get you know, access to medicines for patients. So we don't just do one thing, we do things in a horizontal integrated way, which brings additional value to customers. That's great. Uh, a lot of those issues were just discussed in a, a lunch plenary session that you hosted uh, a short while ago. There was some great discussion around drug pricing, around pol potential policy changes that should happen over time. Uh, in that discussion, were there any big takeaways for you? Yeah, so I, I thought there was a couple things that really, um, really made me think, right? So I think the first thing I would say is when you hear the story of the difference these medications are making in actual patients' lives, mm -hmm. families, caregivers, communities, mm -hmm. we're not doing a good enough job of communicating that story. We're talking about innovation requires investment, and that's why things are priced at the way they are, versus the, you know, getting at the hearts and minds mm -hmm. of people. Because whether you're a policymaker, whether you're a payer, Everybody can relate to that human element, and I don't mm -hmm. think we're doing a good enough job of um, communicating that. I think that was a key takeaway for me. Mm. There was, uh, I know, a lot of um, discussion about telling better innovation stories to help inspire, in addition to the patient stories. Uh, you know, do you think industry should be doing a better job of trying to communicate to the general public the importance of that innovation, as well as obviously the benefits to patients? And, and if so, how, how should the industry be doing that? So, you know, it's interesting. Um, you have cures now to diseases, right? You know, and, and I don't think we've really explained the significance that that has, you know, for, for a community of people. And so I think we're talking about innovation from the benefit of the science innovation versus the innovation and how it's absolutely impacting the quantity and quality of life mm -hmm. of you know, everyday Americans like all of us and globally around the world, candidly, right? Not just in the U.S. And so, to me, we need a different language around innovation mm -hmm. because the innovation is around the science, which we all know that's really what it mm -hmm. is, but people aren't connecting with that for some reason. And so, I, I do think that's an area that needs some work and 
Um, I think the other area that clearly came across in today's panel is we're not doing enough to really help legislators understand the holistic issues. Mm -hmm. They see a piece of the issue. Mm -hmm. They're not seeing holistically what are the problems we're trying to solve as an industry mm -hmm. and the impact that it will have. And I think we have to find a way to partner with them better to, mm -hmm. to, to get that point, those points across, to come with maybe more innovative solutions than we've come up with in the past. I guess and also understand the timelines associated with that. Absolutely. You, you hear about some of those innovations and it takes years and, and in some cases heavy investment to actually bring those innovations yes. to life. Yeah, absolutely. It, de it, it definitely, is an area of opportunity for the industry mm -hmm. is to really think about their communication strategy, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when you're thinking about companies that uh, are looking to commercialize or launch an asset, uh, for those companies that might be attending Biotech Showcase, why should they be here? What should they get out of this week? So, you know, I'm a huge fan of Biotech Showcase. I think there's nothing like the collaboration that can occur here. You have experts from across disciplines Mm -hmm. um, and being here and uh, taking advantage of the partnership opportunities to meet people that either might be doing something similar to you or in kind of the same situation you're in as a small startup biotech mm -hmm. and learning from each other, as well as taking advantage of all the experience that's here. I mean, you think about just the panel and the experts that we had on the panel today and their you know, deep expertise, mm -hmm. learning from, it's like, to me, it's a fast way to learn. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to do everything one piece at a time, you can come here and get immersed in it in three days and learn more probably in three days about some things you can do to really ensure yourself some good success moving forward with your assets. Um, it's probably one of the better investments you can make. Agreed. It's uh, dive into the ecosystem and learn from all of these Absolutely. amazing people. Yes. Uh, so the, on that note, a final question. Every year at Biotech Showcase, uh, certain themes start to emerge. I know it's only Tuesday this week, uh, but uh, have some themes started to emerge for you in the discussions you've had, in the meetings you've had? What, uh, what big theme do you see that might drive things in 2020? So I think it's an openness to maybe solving some problems differently. I mean, drug pricing has been an issue for like three decades. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not something that hasn't been um, a conversation point forever. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe going at that problem a little differently is a theme that's coming up. I, I'm hearing a lot of you know, innovative solutions to how people are partnering with legislators, with payers, to get better results that ultimately get access to patients. I think that's a theme that that's got to be an area of focus. We can't be at, we can't be at odds with each other. We want to solve the problem together. Mm -hmm. I think that that's absolutely the number one theme that I think is coming through. Um, and that um, I think the other theme is there's still a lot of investment dollars for innovative products and in mm -hmm. biotech. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 new the new piece of that in my mind is the realization that it's more complex than ever to get a product on the market and making sure that patients have access to the product. Mm -hmm. You can get it you can get it approved, but that doesn't mean your patients are going to have access to it. And really thinking through those access strategies. Mm -hmm. I think is another theme that I've been hearing at this panel mm -hmm. and well, at this conference. Yeah. Well, on a note of optimism, I hope uh, some of those solutions also emerge this year. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it was a pleasure talking a with you and have a great day. You too. Thanks. If you enjoyed the interview that you just saw, please click subscribe to the Biotech Showcase channel so you get notified when future interviews like this one come up. And thanks for enjoying our content.